In this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we are headed to Wisconsin to visit with Jason Sweeney. Jason is a police officer and has been a longtime supporter of Exodus, so we thank you for that. This episode, you get to check out some great Wisconsin bucks that he's shot over the years and get ready to listen to some of his favorite bow hunting stories. Let's go. Hey guys, come on in. I'm Jason Sweeney, nice to meet you. So for the most part, this is where we live. Uh, welcome to Wisconsin. Why don't you guys follow me downstairs? That's what you came to, came to see. So um, this is kind of it's kind of my bird alley, going downstairs into the basement. I used to be really big into into bird hunting. Why don't you come on down here into my man cave? So this is kind of this is kind of my gun room slash archery room. This is where I work on work on the bows. This spot down here obviously is you know pretty pretty tucked away i have all my guns in my safe i've been a police officer for about 21 years um, so i i do have a an arsenal so don't try breaking into my house so yeah this deer here this deer is really important to me um, all three of these deer here are very important to me these were my dad's deer i lost my dad in 1999 he's the one that taught me how to hunt he tells a story about how he had to wade through a river and was freezing out after he shot this deer to actually recover it. And this is my dad right here. And that's me with Fred Bear. That's one of two pictures that I have of me and my dad with Fred Bear. I met him twice. Great, great man, both him and Fred Bear. Let's go take a look at some of the, some of the bigger deer. This deer right here kind of kicked off my obsession with whitetails. I killed that deer in 2005. I was, I was very, very sick when I shot that deer. My wife, she, she encouraged me to go out that morning and I was just, I, I was running a fever. She said, it's the rut. She's like, you gotta get out there. I got to my stand and I was using an old climber at the time. Climbed all the way up the tree, pouring sweat. I get to the top of the tree and I drop my quiver. My quiver hits the ground. At this point I'm thinking, I'm just gonna call it quits. I was, I was just, I was horribly sick. Went all the way to the bottom of the tree, recovered my quiver, got back to the top of the tree, sat down in my stand, and I'm just pouring, pouring sweat. Maybe five minutes later, I look across the cut cornfield, and this guy's coming. And he parallels the, the tree line that I'm sitting in. And as, he, as he's getting closer, I'm trying to stand up in my tree. I finally get to stand up. He must have caught movement or something out, out of the corner of his eye because he looks straight up at me in the tree, and he's seven yards away from me. I come to full draw. He takes off running through the cut cornfield and I bleated at him really, really loud. I was just, as loud as I could, I bah! and he, he put the brakes on, completely stopped dead in his tracks, came to full draw, guesstimated 30 yards, touched off the release, double longed him. He ran 70 yards and piled up. This deer I shot in 2006, not a real, uh, not a real exciting hunt. Here's some of the coyote rugs I shot couple of these coyotes with a pistol. One of them I shot with a 223 from 200 plus yards. Black bear I killed in Saskatchewan from 19 yards on the ground with a bow. This bear was extremely aggressive. He, he was actually, he was on a bait pile and I pulled, we pulled up and I, I pulled up to get my stand and he took off running down a trail. I got out of the, uh, the six by six that we were, that my wife and I were, were riding in at the time and he ran, he actually, he came back. He was, I don't know what, I don't know what was wrong with him, but he came back as I was standing there in the trail looking at him. So he kind of, he kind of came around and made like a big circle and I, I just tried to cut him off and he came out into the clearing at 19 yards and I, I absolutely smoked him with the bow. So this wall right here, this is, these are four, four of the deer that I've, that I've shot over the last five years. I'll start with this one on the left. Um, I call this my second chance buck or my redemption buck. It was November 10th and I ended up uh, shooting about 150 inch 10 point that I injured. I, I shot him, I hit him high, um, hit him right in the scapula and thought my hunt was over that year. Um, that was pretty, you know, I was pretty dejected when I, when I injured that deer. Came home, pouted for about two or three days. My wife was like, 
you got to get back out in the woods. Got a phone call from a buddy. Buddy says, hey, a lot of guys are still laying them down. You got to get back out there. Went back out. It was November 13th. Got back out in the woods. Sat for about three hours. Didn't see anything. Right at last shooting light. About 4, 405, 410, something like that. In the afternoon, this guy comes out. Shoot him. Uh, shot him with the bow. He ran about 35, 40 yards and, and piled up. Um, so that that's, that's, uh, that's my redemption buck there. Uh, this deer... This deer I shot, this is the only deer down here that was shot with a gun. I shot him with a 243. It was 2014 in Wisconsin, we had a polar vortex. Um, it was 30 below with the wind chill. It was the last day of the season. We had a holiday hunt that year. And this is when you could, you could hunt the holiday hunt with a gun. The Packer game was on. I'm not a Packer fan, by the way. Yes, I know I live in Wisconsin and I'm not a Packer fan. I'm a, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. Uh, my, my uncle used to play for him, so don't crucify me. But uh, I had tons and tons of pictures of this deer, all the way starting from August, all the way till about October 5th, somewhere around there, and then all of a sudden he just disappeared. So I thought maybe he got hit by a car. Um, the area that I hunt, there was really nobody else that hunted that area. There was one other guy that hunts across the street from me, um, but I know him very well, and we talk you know, on a, on a consistent basis, so I know he didn't kill him. All of a sudden, December 26th, I go check the camera day after Christmas, and there he is. He, sh he showed back up. I said, I don't know where he went for the rut, uh, but he, he definitely left the property. The property was about 60 acres that I was hunting that year. And he ended up um, pretty much doing the same thing for four days straight. Uh, he was coming out in the afternoon. Uh, it was so cold, I figured he just had to get up to go eat. So I got in the blind that day about 3 o'clock, and it was so cold I knew I was not going to be able to sit very long. So I was bundled up. I had more clothes on than you could imagine. About 4.15, or I'm sorry, 3.15, some does come out. They kind of went around the blind and went behind me. And all of a sudden I heard, I heard a, a deer blowing. And it was the does and they were blowing behind me. And I was, I was thinking to myself, well, they didn't bust me because I'm, first of all, I'm downwind or I'm upwind of them. And they didn't see me when they went past the blind. So I was like, I don't know what they're blowing at. 10 minutes later, I see this guy coming through the honeysuckle. He gets about 30 yards and he clears the honeysuckle and there's a, there's a hole in the honeysuckle about this big. I threw the gun up, rested it on the window of the blind because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to hold, hold the crosshair still. At 30 yards, probably really wouldn't have mattered, but I shot, hit him in the front shoulder. We had 18 inches of snow. It was like a 40 mile an hour wind that day too and it was just brutal and his, when I shot, his nose hit the ground and he snow plowed all the way through that honeysuckle and piled up about 40 yards. And I was so cold, I didn't even go check on this deer right after I shot him. I actually, it was so cold, I just got out of the blind, ran to the truck, turned the truck on high, called my wife, I said, I got him. She's like, no, no way, no you didn't. I was like, yeah, I killed him. And uh, probably so proud of that deer just because of the persistence and uh, this deer here um, actually has 15 scorable points. This one over here, real tight. He's only about 13 inches wide, but he's, he's just got points everywhere. If I could have let him go another, another couple years, you know, looking back on it, you know, he probably would have been a, a mega giant. But, um, you know, at the time, at that point in my, in my hunting career, I, you know, decided to, you know, pull the trigger and I'm glad I did. You know, I don't regret anything. This deer here, uh, on the hoof was the biggest deer I've ever shot. Had to be all of about 300 pounds. He's a clean 10, as you can tell. He was rubbing a tree, and actually, he was rubbing the tree right before I shot him. Um, a doe actually got him killed. But this deer, um, I killed November 7th, and he was with a hot doe. The doe was 15 yards from my tree stand, and he was just flanking her. He would not let her out of his little area that he had her corralled in. She kept walking toward me, and the closer she got, he just kept following. And they were both in the cattails behind me in a, in a, a swampy area. Hart shot him. He ran 60 yards, jumped a crick, and then, and then piled up. Um, and this, is, this deer right here is uh, a deer I killed last year. Uh, this was my, my 2020 buck. He scored 156 and 1 8 inches. He, I, you know, I don't really, I don't get too caught up with um, scores. Um, as much as I do just shooting the biggest deer I have on camera that year. This deer I actually killed October 8th. One of the things I've, I've really started concentrating on is trying to kill these deer before they, before they get to the rut and then they, 
they take off and you never see them again. But I killed this deer over a, a really, really large hub scrape. It was a big social scrape uh, that I found when I was actually placing cameras out. Being early October, I wanted to see if I could see if I could locate a decent deer over some scrapes. So I started placing you know cameras out over every decent sized scrape I found. This deer was one of two bucks that was bigger than him that was using this same scrape. As you can see, I have pictures. I have pictures of all the deer um, that are up on these walls because I think I think trail cameras can really tell a story. Um, I think you can you can kind of put the puzzle pieces together. You know, when you're running as many cameras as I run. But uh, getting back to this guy, he and he ended up coming out right before dark on October 8th. I actually I got it I got into my stand early that day. I put some dominant buck urine out in the uh, in the scrape. And he came from the downwind side. And so it, it, it tells me that my, you know, my, my scent control was on point that day. And I don't know if he was just curious and wanted to come, you know, check out that, that dominant buck urine or what, but he came right, he came right to, that, to that scrape. He actually crossed underneath my tree stand and came right to that scrape. And I shot him probably five yards. He was right under my tree. I drilled him. And he was kind of quartering too when it went out, went out through the diaphragm. I hit one long diaphragm and uh, liver, and then it, it clipped his back leg too. And he took off running down the trail that I had to leave. My, he actually ran right toward the truck. So I, I didn't really, I had no choice. I had to, I had to go back. I'm walking down the trail that, uh, that leads to the truck, and I see my lighted knock blinking on the trail. And I'm like, oh no. So I pick my arrow up had good blood on it. I see the blood trail like heading toward my truck. It gets about 20 yards from my truck and then it cuts into a cornfield. So I'm like, all right, I gotta get out of here. Come home, uh, gave it about three hours. I got my wife, got my daughter. We pick up the blood trail. We start following the blood trail through the corn. So my wife gets a phone call from work. Uh, my wife's a nurse. They're like, we need you, need you to come into work. So I had to stop, stop trailing this deer um, immediately. So I ended up coming back the next day with a couple of my, my police buddies and we followed the blood trail for about 150 yards. He was found smack dead in the middle of a cornfield. That's, that's my best buck to date. I do want to show you a couple more things. This is an antelope that I killed uh, in Bellevue, uh, South Dakota back in 2008. Uh, shot, him, shot him with a bow as well. This is my wife's first buck right here. Uh, she actually made a phenomenal shot on this deer. She shot this 126 yards freehand with her 243, and she did, she absolutely just stoned it. The deer dropped right in its tracks. She hit it a little little high, but absolutely just just stoned it. Um, and then I killed I killed this this mule deer in Upton, Wyoming. 40 years to the day in the exact same place that my father killed his mule deer in Upton, Wyoming. Um, so this is a special deer to me um, because it, it, it reminds me of my father. The thing about this deer is he died, he died a, a, a very painful death, to say the least. He was, he, was running, he was running away at about 225 yards, and the guide that I was with at the time said, shoot. He's like, shoot him. And I was, I was, I was using a 300 short action ultra mag. Put the crosshairs around the base of his neck, and as mule deer do, they, they bound. They don't, you know, they don't run. They they bounced, and I pulled the trigger, and I saw his I saw his rear end drop. And the guy goes, "You shot him." He goes, "You shot him in the haunches." He just kind of the deer just kind of hunched up, almost like he was gut shot. You know, first he first he dropped, and then he kind of hunched up, and he continued to walk around the edge of this coulee, and then dropped down in the coulee. So we made a big half moon circle and came around the backside of the of the coulee in here. He was bedded up on the shelf, and I put another one right in the shoulder and ended up, he ended up expiring after that second shot. But as we, when we got up to the deer, I didn't hit him in the haunches. Uh, I actually hit him right in the bean bag. So that, uh, that could not have been the uh, best feeling in the world. But, um, you know, he looks great on my wall and I'm proud of him, so.